What's up, everybody? Hopefully all of you are doing well. Today we're going to be making one of my specialty recipes, and that's my chicken, sausage, and seafood gumbo. I've had to make this recipe at least three times a year for the past five or six years, and I've been able to experiment and be flexible with my ingredients. This recipe is step-by-step, step, so let's walk through it. If this is your first time visiting my channel or you're a new subscriber, the written recipes can be found at gdseasoning.com. The links are below in the description box and they're pinned at the top of the comments. We're gonna start this recipe off with the Trinity, that is onions, celery, and bell pepper. We're gonna get those chopped up along with four to five cloves of garlic. I'm gonna be using a food processor to do that because over time I've discovered that I like a bigger base when it comes to the trinity of these particular three vegetables. So you need about two bell peppers to give you one and a half cups. And then um, we're gonna move on to the onions. We need two cups of onions. So I had two small onions and I'm gonna use the pulse button. Just don't turn the processor on because you're gonna pulverize them. You just wanna even dice. And then I'm gonna do the celery just the same. You don't need to buy a food processor to get this done. Of course, you can break out your really sharp knife and go at it and just dice all of the vegetables as you need them. Next, I'm gonna be slicing up my andouille sausage. This is a spicy sausage and it is definitely a part of gumbo. This andouille sausage just so happens to be a chicken andouille. Uh, they also make pork andouille sausage, or you can use any type of sausage that you like to use in gumbos. You can have pork, you can have beef. Um, this particular sausage has a spice to it or a little bit of a kick. So I use 24 ounces of andouille and 24 ounces of a different smoked sausage. This one happens to be beef. I have 12 ounces of beef and 12 ounces of a turkey smoked sausage. You can break that up however you like. For this recipe, you're gonna need three to four pounds of chicken. That can be chicken breast, that can be chicken thighs, or some people even choose to use drumettes. Whatever you wanna use, you can use. I just so happen to have chicken breast on hand. I seasoned it with two tablespoons of Grand Diamond All-Purpose Seasoning, and then I am going to brown it. Now, I did this in my last recipe. I like to brown the chicken first because it helps the cooking process move faster. So you don't need to cook the chicken all the way, just brown it a little bit. Browning the chicken first also helps the seasoning to stick to the chicken. I also brown my sausage also right behind the chicken. Browning the sausage, especially if you're using beef and pork, which tend to be fattier, kind of helps render that fat out a little bit so you don't have so much fat to skim off the top of the gumbo. So I have them all done and you can do this the day before and put it in the refrigerator or you could do this prior to the start of making the gumbo itself. Moving on to the shrimp. We need three pounds of shrimp for the recipe. So I'm showing you the shrimp that I have. They have been deveined already. I'm gonna remove the tails. And then we're gonna talk really quick about the nerve or vein that is underneath the shrimp. So underneath the shrimp, there is a vein. That vein is the nerve cord, which is connected to the brain of the shrimp. The green arrows at the top are pointing to the intestine, which leads to the stomach. That's the part that we all know to remove because it's part of the digestive tract. But the red arrows are pointing to the nerve cord, which is connected to the brain. And just to give you a comparison, just like shrimp have nerves, so does chicken wings. And we love the drums and the flats. Uh, those are full of nerves. When you put that chicken wing or that flat or drum in your mouth and pull the bone clean, you're eating plenty of nerves. So if you just want to remove it for presentation's sake, you can, but I need everybody to realize that it's not part of the digestive tract. Now, of course, that nerve cord is very visible, especially on the larger shrimp, especially when you're using like the ones I'm using 21, 25s or 13, 15s or even prawns. You can decide at this point whether you want to add another one to two hours to your prep time by removing all of those. And if you're using size 26, 30s, which are even smaller, your job is going to be even more tedious. So we have mostly everything prepped at this point. We'll talk about the crab in a minute, but these are the four ingredients that need to go in once the roux is done. So they already need to be ready to go into the pot once the roux is the perfect color. So we have our trinity there, our fresh garlic, 
Uh, we have a 30 ounce can of tomatoes and two fresh bay leaves. My store had them, they were so pretty. I have my roux going over medium heat. I kind of play with the heat a little bit so I don't burn it. We're gonna get the roux to a chocolate color. If you're one of those people that like to have your roux a little darker, um, even closer to black, you can do that. As long as you control the heat and you don't burn the roux, it'll be fine if that's what you choose to do. So then I just add the Trinity and I'm gonna sweat the vegetables out in the roux. Also, my roux measurements are a little different. I use less oil now than I do flour. Once the vegetables have adhered to the roux and it looks like a paste, I'm gonna go ahead and add the garlic. Uh, I saute those around for about five, six minutes or so. And then I'm going to add the garlic and I'm gonna stir that around for about a minute. You'll know when it's starting to meld together well because you're gonna smell that garlic. And then after that, I'm gonna throw in my bay leaves and I'm gonna add my tomatoes. By the way, I am using a 15 quart brazier. Um, the only reason I'm using a brazier uh, pot is because it's low and kind of fat. That, because it's easy for me to film with, okay? Um, you can use a 15 quart or an 18 quart stock pot and you'll be fine, whatever is easiest for you. These are our seasonings. We're gonna be going in to start with three tablespoons of Grand Diamond All-Purpose Seasoning. I have two tablespoons of dried thyme. We have our gumbo filet, and in the back there we have some crab oil. That also changed. Every recipe now that I have seafood, I use crab oil in, and it has changed the game tremendously. Someone asked me why I didn't put crab oil into my stock. It's only to uh, control the spice. Crab oil can be really spicy, and if you have people that are sensitive to spice, you might wanna be careful with it. So I add about a tablespoon in, and then along the way I taste it to see if I wanna add more, and I keep in mind who's gonna be eating the gumbo. If it's just me or the, my friends that love spice, I go for it, I don't have a problem. But putting crab oil in your gumbo will change the game. Now we can follow up with our chicken and our sausage, just add that in. And the only reason I'm putting it in before the stock is because if I add the stock and then add the meat, everything splashes everywhere and you make a big mess. So I kind of add the meat and then I follow up with the stock after I get everything stirred around. And don't worry, the chicken, if you have some large pieces, it'll cook down during the cooking process. So just get everything stirred together as best you can. And then we're gonna follow up with our homemade seafood stock. The video for the homemade seafood stock will be linked below. Also at this point, you can add your okra. Uh, a lot of people like to add their okra and let it cook for long periods of time in the gumbo and it's gonna give off its juices. It's That texture just gets me, but you can add it right now, okay? <laughs> I choose to add it later, so don't panic. You will see how I add my okra to the gumbo later. Just give me a minute. Now we're just gonna bring everything up to a boil over medium high heat with the lid on, and then we're gonna turn it down to medium. And just let everything simmer for about an hour. Moving on to the crab. I'm gonna be using king crab, or you can also use blue crab, of course, which is more traditional. Or you can use snow crab. I'm using about four to five pounds of king crab legs, which I had the fishmonger cut for me into smaller pieces. Just ask them to run the legs across the blade and that way your meat is more exposed and it's easier to get to. I get a big question all the time on my seafood videos. Was your king crab cooked or raw? King crab and snow crab for that matter are already pre-steamed or cooked before you buy them. It's just how they're processed. I'm gonna link a video here on YouTube that you can watch to see how snow crab and king crab are processed. And then that way you'll see. This meat is already cooked when you buy it. And so what I'm showing you here is what I do because the claws are so gnarly and some people don't wanna do the work to get the meat out of them and you've paid a lot of money for your crab meat. So I take the ends and I get that meat out and then I throw it in the pot because I don't want them wasting that. Some people won't do the work. Also what I did with these crab legs was I took my knife and I scraped the little hairs off of the crab legs. Uh, king crab legs tend to have some hairs in some places so I did take my knife and I scraped that off. See how much meat I was able to save by doing that? It only took me a few minutes with a good sharp knife. Save that money child, don't waste it. So at this point, the chicken and sausage and all of the spices have been simmering for about an hour. 
And as you can see, we have fat that floats to the top. So again, if you use pork or beef sausage, you might have a little more, but you just take your serving spoon, a large serving spoon, just like I'm doing here, and you wanna make sure you catch or um, skim for the fat on the top. At this point, you can give it a taste and check for your seasonings. You can use any traditional seasonings, any seasonings that you like, but I would caution you on the salt. Remember, seafood has sodium in and of itself. So be careful with your all-purpose seasonings that have high sodium contents and stuff like that. That's why you have that chance at that point to taste it, but don't take it too far because you still have to add your shrimp and your crab. So I'm just going to quickly saute the okra. This is 12 ounces of frozen okra that has been thawed out. And that right there is what I cannot get with. Oh. <laughs> so my aunt, we had a discussion about this one day. She said, you know, you can fry it. And I'm like, mm, yeah, but what if I just don't want to be bothered? But she said, if you fry it, let me cook it for you. And I know you'll like it. So she showed me how to saute the okra to get that rope or that uh, slime off of there. And so that's what I do now for the okra. Just add a little bit in that way, but I still don't like a whole lot of it. 12 ounces for a recipe this size is perfect. I'll go ahead and add in my crab. This is some random super lump crab meat that I had. Don't pay no attention to that. Even though you could add it, you can add from a half a pound to a pound of super lump crab if you wanted to. You got king crab, you don't really have to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and toss in my okra, give everything a stir, and I'm going to continue to let it simmer for about another half hour. So at this point, when you're looking at the recipe, you can tell when I stir uh, this gumbo that it is quite a bit of meat and ingredients in there. You might be saying, can I add another quart or two of stock? Yep, you absolutely can. You may also have a question like, can I cut back on some of the amounts of meat and seafood? Absolutely. You can cut one pound off of every meat and seafood ingredient, and you can keep the seafood stock at four quarts, and you'll still have a nice juicy consistency. I wrote this recipe keeping in mind that a lot of you wanted flexibility. So when you get to the written recipe over on the website, make sure you start reading at the top because I wrote the notes right at the top where you couldn't miss them, and that'll help you along. And while you're over there, be sure to subscribe to my website. Just scroll all the way down to the bottom of any page and you can fill in your information to receive the newsletter. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. I worked really hard on it to be able to show it because I just kind of do this from memory now. I've made it so much and then I can change it when I want to. This gumbo is absolutely delicious and I hope I've done my part by showing you just how easy making this recipe can be. Before you guys leave this video, I ask that you give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with your friends and leave me a comment. Thank you all so much for joining me. You know I appreciate it when you come cook with me and hang out. Don't forget this recipe and others can be found at gdseasoning.com. And I'll see you guys next time.